totally unnecessary intro. I do want to do a shout out to Debova Musical Instruments for gifting me that awesome mandolin and guitar. I wish I could play better. I wish I could kind of sing. Don't, some of us don't really have a natural singing voice. No disrespect to, to David Bowie, but I uh, just want to jump into a post Pikes Peak Marathon race recap, report, vlog, whatever you want to call it. Uh, kind of the blow by blow went, went down as well as some race footage uh, thanks to some people. I'll link to their handles and names in uh, video credit. I got some race clips thanks to you that sent those in. Uh, a lot of the, the footage in the middle you'll see here from bar camps from Jamil Curry. Run Steep Get High also does Mountain Outposts and amongst other channels uh, from Air Vapor Running. But yeah, I just want to, you know, if you didn't know the results, it's on Strava. I ran, a, it was a subpar race. I was not happy with how it turned out. I was sixth place uh, and ran 346. 348. I think I ran 346. Uh, not the time I was hoping for, or the place I was hoping for, but it was a competitive Golden Trail Series race, and I think one of the more historically deep competitive Pikes Peak results. Of course, you can't always compare times with, with weather, uh, but it, it was did draw an international field in the marathon, and we did run the full course. Uh, the ascent the day before was cut short because of thunderstorms, which I said in my pre-race video, but uh, it was a nice weather day. It wasn't too hot. Usually it, it's a lot warmer down low at Manitou Springs, so no excuses with the weather. No excuses with my fall either. I'll get into the blow-by-blow -blow of that because uh, I, I, I didn't lose any places because of, of my fall, but uh, I'll kind of tell you how the race panned out, I guess, from the start, but yeah, you know, I don't mean to do these videos to to complain or lament or be like, oh, I'm, you know, I don't want to be too negative because it's a huge privilege and honor to be able to have the opportunities to run magical races and dream races like the Pikes Peak Marathon and to be able to to toe the starting line and to have two two you know legs and and to have the fitness and the the sponsorship support and. Uh, the support of the running community and generosity from people like you that's making this all possible, I don't take for granted a single day. And, you know, one fall, one injury, one career-ending accident, one car crash or injury, illness, sickness could totally derail everything in, in running for me. So I don't take a single step for granted. I don't take a single day for granted. And I definitely don't take a single race for granted. And it's really hard to complain too much about having kind of a subpar day in the in the grand scheme of things, right? This is first world problems here. Uh, you choose to do this race, and the pain is is voluntary fatigue and, and effort. And to to be disappointed, like you know, how disappointed can I really be? And uh, I'll get into my fall in a bit too. I could have really really hurt myself. I could have not finished the race. I could have done a lot worse. So it, it, it's hard to complain, but at the same time, I'm a very competitive person. Every time I tow the starting line of a mountain ultra trail race, I think in the back of my mind I have a chance to win. It might be more of a harder chance to win if it's a more competitive field or if it's a, a really extreme race for me. But I, you know, I was pretty confident going into this race, and I thought I thought I, I would definitely be top three or top five, and I wasn't. Uh, so it was a bitter pill to swallow. I also thought I'd run. Uh, at about 10 minutes faster and I predicted that the winning time would be around 3.30 and it, it actually was. Shout out to Dakota Jones for an amazing 3.32 for the win. I've had some battles with Dakota over the years at Lake Sonoma, North Face, uh, Transvolcania to name a few races. Uh, he ran a stellar race, fastest descent split ever. 113 is flying down down Bar Trail, and then you know, kudos to Megan Kimmel for the win. She set the women's course record. I believe she ran 4.15. Uh, that time she set the course record for women, which was like a 36 year old course record. So really really 
amazing performance. Uh, and then, you know, all the runners who finished in front of me, uh, you know, I, I got my butt kicked. <laughs> I wasn't even close to uh, making the top three. I, I faded pretty hard, but I'll, I'll get into the blow by bow in a bit here. Uh, just uh, double checking on Megan Kimmel's time. Yeah, 4.15 she ran. So, yeah, that was flying. Uh, kudos to her and, and you know kudos to all finishers and, and runners out there. It's great meeting a lot of you and uh, Yeah, I was just uh, I was disappointed with how my race went and it's it's hard to predict and you know I get a lot of flack on like the let's run boards and stuff and like sage you over race probably true Sage you shouldn't do any service any distance. Yeah, that's uh you know, maybe part of it, I, I have fun mixing it up and I, I like to do these races, but I, I really have no excuses. I'll place all the blame on myself. Sage, you have a, a crappy diet, you eat too clean. Sage, you don't eat clean enough. You eat, you eat uh, too many sweets, you eat too many carbs. Diet plays a huge role in running. I don't think uh, this is the case. Maybe it's the case, I don't know. Being uh, vegan plant-based, you, you're up to more criticism, I think, than if you weren't. Uh, in a kind of a minority type of diet, so I, I don't think that's always fair. That being said, you know, yeah, maybe I'm deficient in something, maybe not. I think, you know, there's your mental attitude, there's how much sleep you're getting, there's all these other life stresses, there's some, you know, the t I think the timing of your training, specific training focus, periodization of your schedule, of your race schedule for months and a year, as well as DNA, natural talent, and genetics play the biggest role in your running performances. Then you start looking at diet, then you start looking at sleep, then you start looking at the mental game and life stress. But obviously those are all interconnected together, so you can't just separate one variable and be like, ah, you know, it's because of your diet you didn't run well. You didn't eat enough fat, you didn't run well. You didn't eat enough protein, you didn't run well. Could be the case. I'm not saying I'm, I'm not a know-it-all. I'm always learning in the sport, always failing in the sport a lot. And, you know, people are like, Sage, when was the last time you even won a race? Uh, March, I won the Shamrock 15K in Portland, Oregon, which is not a huge competitive race. It was not a small race. I will say so a lot of those, those road races, especially in Portland, Oregon, though, are more competitive, actually, than a lot of ultra trail races. Uh, but I've been doing, I, I like to focus on the more competitive races, and when I tow the starting line of something like a marathon major, like the Boston Marathon, Chicago Marathon, I know I'm not going to win. I'm just time traveling. I'm trying to get the OTQ, Olympic Trials Qualifying Time, at 2.19. Uh, I know I'm not going to beat these guys that run 2.12, 2.10, 2.05 marathons, right? Uh, but in trail mountain ultra running, where I am sponsored, I always think in the back of my mind, I'm going to try to win this race, and if I'm not going to try to win, I'm trying to be top three or podium, and, uh, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't pan out, sometimes you kind of just have a bad day, and sometimes it's hard to predict. You know what your competitors have done, maybe, in relative performances and races. Uh, you could compare times to, you know, if, if people have run certain times at Pikes Peak, for example, and, and you know what they've done in the past, you know what they're coming off of, but you don't know their exact training, you don't know exactly how they're going to respond to it, you don't know who's going to do what on the day exactly or what you're gonna do and so I'll, I'll go through the run by blow by blow of the race here uh, in a second but yeah I just wanted to say that and uh, it's it's I had the relative performance in my head of, of winning the Pikes Peak Ascent in 2014 of the world champs I ran 210 in that race uh, three weeks after Speed Goat but you know I'd, I'd run a better race at Speed Goat that year so I think I, I was in better fitness and I have no excuse because I'm from Colorado I'm acclimated enough i've i've been at pikes peak uh on the trail so i, I knew what i was getting into and i, sh I should have done better uh I really have no excuses there but i wasn't climbing as well as i had in the past there and it was frustrating because i had written my splits down for about a 212 ascent this is the halfway point you're going up the mountain a little over 13 miles up and then you turn around and go back down but so 21k up and I was looking for a 210 split. That's what I ran in the ascent in 2014 uh, when it was the world champs. And I knew I probably couldn't quite hit that time, but I was still thinking, okay, get up in 212, 214, because you turn around on that downhill, you've got all these guys like Dakota, uh, but also all these, you know, all the international guys, Steon, uh, even like a guy like Max King who could run a really fast downhill split, they, they're gonna go at least sub 118 on this downhill, and I'm not, Downhill's never been my forte, smooth or technical. Uh, pikes, you get a mix of both. It's pretty fast, though. You got to go a lot of sub six minute mile pace, right? So a lot of sub uh, 16 kilometers per hour on this trail that has some technical parts. And so I wanted to be in the lead and have a cushion at the top. 
So that was the game plan, and I was pacing myself for that, but first couple of miles, uh, I think it was Darren Thomas from Colorado Springs, who's run the, the Pikes Peak Marathon a lot. Uh, he had a huge PR, I think he PR'd by like 12 minutes. He had a phenomenal race. Him, he took off with Azel, Azaria, Azaria, sorry if I mispronounced your name, who I've raced a lot before actually. I've gotten second to him in the Moab Trail Marathon. I've, uh, he got second to me in the Pikes Peak Ascent in 2014 when he was representing Eritrea. Uh, even though he's, he's lived in Colorado Springs, I think, for a while and, and is familiar with the course. He actually won the ascent the day before. Uh, they took off. They took off. We're out, you know, six minute first mile and at 7,000 feet. You're going up the street in downtown Manatee Springs. And uh, I tuck in with David Sinclair, who was, uh, I had that close uh, race with at Speedgoat. Uh, great runner, 216 marathoner. We got Max King, 214 marathoner. Uh, and then and some international guys with uh, Steon and uh, who am I leaving? Carl Ekloff, uh, David Sinclair, Oriel Cardona, uh, who ended up second. Phenomenal runner. And you know they got this chase pack going. I'm with David Sinclair. We're trying to chase down the top two guys. We're going up the W's. The first couple switchbacks. I'm not feeling real great mentally. I say, okay, it's okay. You don't feel real great at a lot of marathons. You got to warm up into it. But it was like uh, when I first ran the ascent in 2012, and I, I did. I actually bonked pretty bad in that race. I wasn't feeling real good. Didn't feel like my climbing legs were really there. They never felt like they were there at Speed Goat either. Uh, and so, you know, that was a little tough. I was breathing pretty hard. You could see my heart rate data on Strava. It's getting up to 170, which is pretty high for me. It's above threshold. And you're like, gosh, I'm two miles into this race, and it's going to be a, a three-hour, 40-minute race, uh, or over three-and-a-half-hour race, and you're breathing really hard, and you're hurting, and your legs are like, ugh, and you got to climb up this, this mountain uh, to 14,000 feet, right over 4,000 meters. And so... But, you know, I tucked him to David Sinclair. I know he's, he's a great runner. I, I know he's great at going up and down, as he showed at Speed Goat. He's coming off a he win at the US 50K Champs from the week before in Vermont, uh, which is amazing. And he's climbing well. And so we come through bar camp in about 67 minutes. I wanted to come through in 66, 65. I just couldn't. I couldn't. And I was working pretty hard at that point. I think we had probably 40 seconds, maybe 45 seconds on Dakota Jones. Actually, we'll show the clips here. Jamil Curry of Run Steep Get High. Thanks for this video footage. He was at bar camp right here. You can see the aid station there. So you're about 12K in, 7.6 miles in. We're running at 10,000 feet about of altitude, so 3,000 meters. And uh, the trail's a little more flat right there before it kicks up a bit uh, as you get breakthrough tree line. It's kind of big rocks there. Uh, and you can see the leader Azalea, and uh, he's, he's moving real well. He ends up dropping out, actually. He, uh, like I said, he won the ascent the day before, and I think maybe he was bonking above tree line a bit, but we passed him above tree line, and then I didn't see him after that, so he didn't show up in the results, I don't think. So uh, he did get passed by second place, who was Darren Thomas, who ended up leading at the top. I think he ran about a 217 ascent split, uh, but he we couldn't catch him. I couldn't catch him. I was following... David Sinclair, as you can see here, he's got the crazy shorts. I think those are the same shorts he wore at Speed Goat. Uh, but he was moving pretty well. What I wasn't happy with was our split in this mile, actually, because I knew when I raced the ascent, I ran some 11 and 12 minute miles in this section. And, and on that day we were running, we ran like 13 to 14 minute miles. It is very rocky. There's like 700 feet of vertical gain and you are at pretty high altitude. But I, yeah, I was not feeling well. I was breathing really hard. Jim was chasing us there through that section. And uh, shortly after that, we got up a tree line. I, I tried to do some work and, and take the lead from David, but then he passed me back. Uh, and we were kind of slowing down, and Dakota was catching us. Uh, and you don't see that's all the footage I have of us going up there. But uh, yeah, above tree line, when I usually close really well, where I practice the most, ironically, uh, maybe too close to the race now in retrospect. But I didn't do my, you know, my three mile blast from A-frame to the summit, the last three miles or the last 5K to the top. Uh, I've gone 38 minutes before in the ascent. I was doing 41 minutes on this, this pull and in training of, well, in 2014, I did 35 minutes. And that's usually a, a section I take a lot of pride in above tree line at high altitude and knowing the course above tree line. But I was not, I was actually feeling really, really bad. and. 
that's where Dakota passed us with about a mile to go, as well as I got passed also by Steon, and uh, um, uh, I guess Carl didn't pass me, but uh, Oriol uh, Cardona passed me as well, and so we're all doing this switchback at the top, and those guys already have a minute on me, two minutes on me, um, and I, I feel wrecked at the top. And I had envisioned, I come through in about 2.20 as an ascent split, when I had envisioned coming through in about 2.12, 2.13, or 2.14, having a five minute cushion on, on the field, and hopefully being able to hold them off more on the, the downhill. It would have been hard to hold Dakota off on that downhill though. Because uh, he was climbing well and he descended really, really well. So, you know, I was looking to run more in the 330s and I didn't. And I felt so bad on top. Uh, you know, I, I came down, I, I tried my best. Uh, and it was great seeing a lot of you guys passing me head on. Uh, but those guys were flying. And the, the group together, especially uh, the lead pack there, were really, really close together. And they all descended really fast. Uh, and so I was just coming down, trying to do my best. I knew Carl. Uh, you know, who's, he's got Killian's FKTs on uh, Kilimanjaro and uh, one other mountain. Uh, I knew he was probably going to close fast on me. I had a four minute cushion on him, so I was running scared. I was worried, but I knew I was in sixth place and it was a little discouraging and I, I wasn't feeling real great. I wasn't mentally sharp. So coming down into the rocks below A-frame, bar camp, coming back into that tree line area was where I fell. And I was kind of by myself. Uh, there were a lot of runners coming head on at me and it was great to see a lot of you cheering me on and uh, recognize some familiar faces out there which is, is really encouraging to see, it's, it's really cool. Uh, but I was lazy with my foot, you know, the Hoka One One Torrents were working great, I really love that shoe. Uh, I just didn't lift my foot up enough on one of these big rocks down there and I, I caught it, so this is about 16-17 miles into the race. Fatigue is definitely a factor here, uh, as well as just, you know, not concentrating enough, being clumsy. Uh, and my, my left foot kind of caught and I'm super manning through down the trail uh, and I'm running, you know, I was probably running close to six minute mile pace, 16 kilometers per hour, uh, which is feels very fast because it is somewhat technical and there's big rocks and sharp tree roots and all sorts of things poking up that could really hurt you if you smash into them and it's, you know, a negative 10% grade, you're still dropping 600 feet Per, per mile in that area. And so to be flying horizontal, head first, with your arms out, super manning downhill, I, I, you know, it's weird how things happen. It seems like everything's happening in slow motion. And I just remember thinking, well, this is gonna be a hard fall. You're flying through the air. You're, you're going faster than you've ever gone when you've fallen on a trail, probably. You could be, this is going to be an uh, injury that's probably going to take you out of the race. I was thinking like, you, when you hit the ground, you're probably going to have to get stitches and you're probably not going to be able to finish and you might break something. Uh, that's That was the thought process going through my head. I don't know exactly what happened on impact. Uh, there were some witnesses, there were a lot of people coming up in this section. But I, I got my hands out in front of me and I think I jammed my, my pinky and my ring finger into a rock and I skidded. I, I didn't get too skinned up though on my hands. I was thinking of Max King wearing gloves and how he said he, the gloves saved him and I was like, oh, I don't have gloves on. Uh, and then I somehow twisted onto my shoulder because I also scraped up my shoulder a little bit, but that was minor, that was minor. Uh, and then, you know, the knees came down. Uh, I still have a, a bandage on there, but that, that knee came smacking down. And because of the impact force, uh, I was lucky it was a smooth rock. It must have been smooth because it didn't dice me. Like when I fall on at Chuckanut and UTMB, it was at slower speeds, but I hit a sharp edge on the rock and that's why I needed stitches. This was probably more of a dull rock. It still scraped up the skin a bit and I was bleeding a bit, but you know, and it, it was a hard fall. Big tree fall hard, right? Uh, I'm, I'm not that big of a guy actually. I'm a little above average height, five foot 11, but anyway, uh, it, it hurt. It hurt a lot. I, I apologize to those around me. I was shouting the F word repeatedly like a dozen times probably. I, I actually almost started crying as a full grown man. I admit like I was in a lot of pain. I was kind of like whimpering after I shouted the F word a lot. And I what happened was my, my calf muscle also cramped up at the same time because of the impact force I think. And as someone said on Strava who, who witnessed the fall, they said, I thought you broke your leg for sure. Because <laughs> um, I was like grabbing my knee and my leg in, in pain and I kind of squiggled around on the ground for about five seconds in shock. Uh, but I looked down my knee instantly and I could tell the blood wasn't gushing out real fast like it was when I need stitches. 
uh, and I, I always make my falls count. They're always during races. So uh, I've fallen in training runs, but it's always been more mild. When I fall in a race, it's usually a big epic fall. And so I looked down on my knee, I saw it wasn't bleeding that bad. I, I just kind of got up, dusted myself off, kind of started limping down, and then I was like, okay, you could finish, you could run. And then I was like, you know, it's, you got to run fast, uh, you know, at least six minute miles, which wasn't blazing fast, but I, I was determined not to get caught by Carl behind me. I didn't know who was behind me, but it was Carl. And, uh, you know, I held him off by a couple minutes, but I was limping down back into the bar camp aid station. Should Jamil got the footage right there, you could see. Uh, it was about, that was about a mile after I fell, so I was kind of getting back into it, but not blazing fast. I was a little more timid after that fall and kind of in, in a bit of pain, and the muscles definitely hurt now uh, from that descent, but, you know, it was discouraging. It was discouraging. Uh, the fall did not affect my placement at all, though, so I, I held six plays all the way down, and no, no one passed me. I didn't pass anyone, uh, but it was disappointing. Mainly, I was disappointed in my climb uh, and, and just not... I was breathing really hard and my muscles felt tired. Uh, and I, you know, I did what I could on the day, but I just, I didn't have the fitness that I thought I had and that I was confident in having. And uh, that could be for a variety of reasons. But again, I got no excuses. Uh, kudos to all those guys that, that kicked my butt and got more points in the Golden Trail series. I uh, definitely need to regroup and rethink things. And I do appreciate all your supportive comments on here as well as on Strava for following along in this journey. And again, you know, yeah, sixth place, 346. It's hard to not be too disappointed because like I said, this is all voluntary. It's an honor to take part in these races, to be able to have these opportunities to run beautiful mountain courses uh, and to be involved in the running community. Johnson. I could have easily fallen and, and broken my go. neck or broken, actually broken a leg. I might have broken my pinky finger. I, don't, I might get the sixth in a couple of days. I don't know, it, it still actually hurts pretty bad. It's kind of, kind of bent here. Uh, I don't know what a broken, I've never broken a bone in my body, so I don't know yet. I uh, don't need stitches in the knee for sure. I might actually go ride my bike today, get a little slight spin in, but yeah, it's, it's humbling. It's a humbling sport. It's a tough sport. It's a fickle sport. I've been doing this for a long time now. I probably do over race. I probably do over race. This is my fifth marathon of the year, uh, and it's counting the road marathons I've done. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't happy with how my form looked in the video. I gotta maybe tweak some things in my running form, work on getting my, my power stride back more, and uh, yeah, just optimize things more, but always learning, always failing. I'm, I'm, uh, it's fun for me to do goofy music videos as well on here. Thanks for, for putting up with that and for putting up with uh, my rants and, and vlogs, but I will get back to more informative training talks on here again congrats to all the runners out there it's great meeting so many of you out there at pikes peak marathon weekend as well as appreciating all your comments on social media and instagram at sage Kande and twitter at sage Kande, uh, as well as of course on here uh big thanks to the patreon supporters but i will be doing more running related content you know me any service any distance i probably will try to optimize and focus more to actually do well in races heading into the future. Always want to be improving, always want to be having fun though, and always want to be healthy. That's Those are all, all big goals in the sport as well as uh, trying to be competitive. Uh, and you know, I don't mean to be hard on myself, but I have very high standards and expectations. And so, uh, you know, when I'm, I'm disappointed, I'll, I'll let you guys know. And I just want to be, you know, honest and, and tell the truth to you guys. Uh, but yeah, definitely open to constructive criticism and anything you guys want to say but really do appreciate your support and feedback hope your running's going well be sure to subscribe on here for more of these types of videos as well as check out our extensive playlist uh on here sandy and i uh have our coaching website sagerunning.com training plans any service any distance thank you so much guys really really appreciate it and definitely stay tuned for more via 2max productions